Well, rain was the forecast last August, and that's exactly what we got. Our nine-year-old granddaughter Willow was due to stay a couple of days. In anticipation of this bad weather, I had sent for some spinning plates from the internet in the hope that this would provide some novel entertainment and keep Willow amused for a few hours. I suggested to her that if we got good enough, something like this I thought, then we could record our activities and perhaps even make a film. She was so excited! I had absolutely no idea how this promised film would be made, mind you, and didn't even know if I had any software to create such a thing. By the way, we never did get good enough, but of course there was no going back now. Willow being Willow gave her practice session all of two minutes. I had more than a couple of hours in mind. And then she announced she was ready to start. She came up with the idea that we could each perform individually and then all together. We created some posters so that each of us could introduce ourselves on film and call ourselves the Massey Spinning Tops. At least it was passing the time because it was still raining. A few stills were taken and a bit of film footage then I had a look at my PC and found something called Windows Movie Maker. Take 47. Hmm, I wonder what that does. The Massey Spinning Tops, part one, starring Willow Massey. Okay, not great I know, but we all have to start somewhere. At least I learned to upload film, make some cuts, add a bit of music. Um, Thank you for watching! By the next morning the weather had improved and we hired a boat and we cruised from Datchet to Maidenhead, taking the cameras of course. It was a wonderful day out. So within a few days I had made not one but two films. I was desperate to make another one soon. I made a further two films before becoming frustrated with Windows Movie Maker, particularly with the lack of flexibility when mixing music and the film audio. It seemed to be either one or the other or 50-50, which just wasn't enough. I did some research on the internet and decided to download a 30-day trial of Sony Vegas software. What a huge learning curve, I had no idea how to start. I spent every spare hour on YouTube, a site I'd never really used much before, searching for tutorials on my new software. At around the same time, I was in the London Camera Exchange in Reading, shopping for a monopod for our new HD camcorder. Whilst chatting with a sales assistant about a new hobby of filmmaking, another member of staff approached me and handed me a leaflet for the RFVM. He had overheard our conversation and thought I might be interested in joining. He, Jonathan that is, told me that he recently had joined himself and that they were currently running a beginner's course. Wonderful! Help was at hand. Unfortunately, I had already missed out on the first four weeks of the six-week beginner's course, but went along very attentively to the first meeting. I opened the door to a sea of male faces, all, um, how can I put this, a little older than I. I was, however, made to feel very welcome. It was announced at my first meeting that there was to be a competition the following week for a one-minute film. Well, how difficult could that be? No sound! It died a death! I was so embarrassed. How could this happen when my DVD seemed to work perfectly well at home? As I discovered later, successful DVD burning is a whole topic on its own. Here's what my film should have sounded like.
I had imagined that several members would already have experienced the frustrating learning curve of learning Sony Vegas and be able to help me. What I found out, however, was that no one else was actually using it. Their reaction was more like, wow, that's a powerful tool, which I realise now that it is, but believe me, it almost went in the bin a few times. Coming up to Christmas, I also tried a little bit of green screen work. Well, actually, white tablecloth work, since that's what I used instead. Hi everybody, Merry Christmas to you all. And a Happy New Year to you, Willow and Autumn and all the rest of the family. I managed to get John and myself shrunk down to appear on a Christmas card as part of our Christmas message. We had been placed beautifully on the card, however, after I rendered the movie, the track motion seemed to have realigned itself so that John was hanging off the card. Never mind, all part of the learning curve. I made a separate Christmas message from granddaughter Willow too, who was thrilled to be fairy at the top of the Christmas tree. The next club competition in January was to be a documentary. It was made clear that documentary entries should be informative and had to include commentary. What? How on earth do you do that? I had neither the skill nor the material to make a documentary. Then I had thought that maybe I could use some of the thousands of photos I'd taken of our garden over the past 12 years and put together some kind of documentary film telling the story of our garden. I'd taken a few bits of video footage in September whilst the garden was still looking reasonable so maybe I could use those too, amongst the stills, to bring it more to life as a film. As my film developed, I decided it needs a bit more depth of a story, so I found myself including the fact that my parents had also been great gardeners, and backtracked to my childhood, to enable me to include photographs of my parents' garden too. It was beginning to look more hopeful. I began to choose some music, but the commentary had yet to be tackled. For my first attempt at recording, I even had the music track playing in the background. How stupid was that? Playback was a disaster. I had several attempts and relaxed a little bit more each time, but was not happy with the sound quality. I emailed Laurie over Christmas asking advice on what to look for when buying a new microphone, since I assumed that was the problem. He responded immediately with some suggested brands, but also copied Jeff for his advice. Firstly, Jeff suggested moving my microphone about six inches or so to the side of my mouth. That actually made a big difference already. It was better, but still not great. He offered some further advice by email. Hi Anne, says Jeff. I would suggest that you use a high pass filter in your audio software to reduce frequencies below 300 Hz, then apply a 6 dB boost to around 2 kHz before gently rolling off frequencies above 5 kHz or so. Good luck, Jeff. Well, this might as well have been written in Swahili. A couple of days later, my son Jamie was visiting. Jamie's got a BSc in computer science and is my knight in shining armour at times when it comes to technology. I showed Jamie Jeff's email and his response was, yeah, so what's the problem? He understood. Fantastic. It was payback time. I had forgotten that Jamie, who'd worked at the Students' Union whilst at uni, had been responsible for setting up the stage for visiting bands. In other words, my very own sound engineer. I realised the success of my garden documentary was probably the variety of content in the film, as well as the addition of commentary, of course. And this got me thinking about a film I was working on, one of my mum's life. I'd set out to produce just a slideshow, however now thought of something more in documentary terms. My mother was born in Canada and spent the first four years of her life there. I decided to explain why her father had moved there in 1928 and his girlfriend had followed him and they married in Toronto. The problem was I only had one photograph of my mother in Canada, so I needed to find a way to pad out the story by other means. Thanks to Google, I was able to include a picture of the church where my grandparents married, and also Google Street View provided a photo of the actual house where my mother started her life. 
A few years previously, whilst doing some family tree research, a cousin of my mum's had sent me a book about Old Wishaw, the town where my mum grew up when she returned from Canada. My cousin had added some notes, identifying relevant pictures in the book, including homes my mother had lived in. I had scanned them and again animated the images to include in my film. Here's a short extract of how I created the Canadian part of the story. My grandmother, Nancy Syme, just 22, followed my grandfather out to Toronto, where they were married in Knox Church on the 18th of October, 1929, almost exactly nine months before my mum was born on the 11th of July, 1930. She was named after her maternal grandmother, Mary Bell. My grandfather found a job eventually as the caretaker of their apartment block in Essex Street, Toronto, where they were to live. Thanks to the wonders of the internet, this is how Essex Street looks today, with their house just on the left-hand side. Five years after their arrival in Canada, however, it became clear to my grandparents that the depression they had hoped to escape from was also affecting Canada. With financial help from parents to pay their way back home, they made the decision to return to Scotland. My film called Mum's Story has been shared with as many family members as possible, as well as old school friends of mine who knew my mum, who died in 2006. A mixture of laughter and tears has been the feedback, including that from people who have never even met my mum. I take that as a compliment, that the combination of film and music creates the emotion that I certainly felt whilst making the film. Had I not been pushed outside my comfort zone whilst making my garden documentary film, Mum's film would never have turned out the way it did. I have now made 27 films. I continue to learn my editing software, sometimes with Sony themselves, who do a live webinar once a month. Last month's topic was compositing. I love that overlay look, and I used this in my most recent holiday film of St Lucia, just at sundown with some locals wandering along the beach. So much still to learn, but what a long way I feel I've come in such a short space of time since the making of the massy spinning tops. It's great to have found such an amazing creative new hobby, but of course already I want a new camera which offers more flexibility with depth of field shots. The point of this film is just to say thank you so much to all you RFVM members who have made me so very welcome. The willingness of members to share information, knowledge and even equipment has been amazing. I would like to thank each and every one of you, but especially thanks to Jonathan who presented me with the club leaflet in the first place, without which, I dare say, I'd never have joined. Thank you everyone.